it was very clear this was a rule of VAT and this is a rule that was very very clear uh, that um, you know, it, it was something that was outside the government's control so having a campaign on it was all very well but the EU refused to change the rules and, and therefore it had to continue it was only once we left the EU uh, that we were able to actually see that tax abolished well, during the referendum, actually, David Cameron went to the EU and the EU decided they would change their laws. So now from 2022, any member of state can act to on tax if they want to. So really, Brexit has only made less than a year's difference. Um, and it also is a tax that will be affected by anyone who has a period, but also anyone who buys them. So what do you mean anyone who has a period? So you mean women and girls? So I, I just mean anyone who has a uterus, not all women. We, uh, women and girls. Periods. Well, no, not all no. women. Are, no, I mean, you know, people who are postmenopausal, people, you know, women, women under the menstrual age. So women and girls. We're not saying people who have periods on my show. We're saying women and girls. OK, well... Our no, genuinely, I won't have you on the show if you're going to talk that nonsense. Men don't have periods, full stop. Women and girls. OK, well, I think that's quite transphobic, but... Some, you think that's some quite transphobic. Do, do you know any men who have periods, Laura? I, I do actually know quite a lot of trans activists. Do you know any so, men yeah. who have periods? I know... Yes, I do. You do? I think trans men are I think they're men. lying to you, love. I, no, I, I, I don't agree with that. You don't um, agree with that? You think men... You think men who don't have uteruses... Uh, and uh, you, you think men have periods, do you? Yes, because some men have uteruses. Some men have uteruses. How, how do those men have uteruses if they're not born women? If they identify as a man and yet they have a uterus, then mm -hmm. they're a man with a uterus. Well, you can identify whatever you want, but you, only women and girls have periods, don't they? That's a biological okay. fact. I think that's in all the medical, all the medical, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, books. I think I'm pretty sure. Okay, well, I, okay. I don't think that conversation is necessarily helpful. No, but I do. I know. I, well, it is. I mean, let's let's again. Let's talk about something sensible. Yeah. So you wanted you wanted the tampon tax. Okay. What I've never understood about this, and I've and I've re I've, I've written about this in the past, um, is is why people got so obsessed with this. There are lots of products that have VAT on them. Again, e-books. Um, when I bought a car seat for my daughter when she was a baby, there was VAT on that. Um, why did we have such an issue? Why did people have such an issue about VAT on this one particular product? I think because it's such an example of sexism and just an example of the fact that people who have periods women. weren't in the decision-making rooms. There are very few women, especially when the tax was introduced in 1973, only 4.3% were women. And so people felt like they couldn't talk about the, uh, the whole topic of periods. And so it's more than just a tax on this. It's also about period poverty. It's also about period education and the fact that so many girls across the country are missing school because of this Well, period we're, told, we're told this all the time, but uh, there's very little evidence for these statements. It's, uh, there is actually evidence. Um, Plan International UK has done a huge study over the years and they have found that 10% of school girls in the UK miss school because they don't have access to period products and they feel like they can't What do you mean them. they don't have access to period products? So they can't go to Superdrug or Boots? You're saying they can't afford them? You're saying their parents aren't giving them to them? Yes, yeah, so 10% of schoolgirls literally come from families that cannot afford them. They perhaps have lots of siblings or they're in the 4 million kids in this country that are in poverty and they cannot afford them every single month. Um, but there, there's a wider statistic that says that 49% of schoolgirls have missed at least a day of school every year because they're embarrassed about their periods. That's and got nothing to... to do with tampon tax, though, has it? It's got a lot to do with period stigma, though, and period shame, which is also attached to the tampon tax and why it's been going on for so long. Because people didn't want to talk about it. Exactly. I have to say, I, I don't, I mean, I'm 51, I don't even remember there being a stigma about periods even when I was young. Well, I mean, Where, where's this come otherwise? from? I think it's, it's happened forever, we, even when it comes to just the, the terminology that we use, like time of the month or like all of these other words that make us not be able to say the word period, even the period adverts that we've had that's like, please keep it discreet, have these little uh, tins that you can put your period products in and nobody will know, uh, or the blue liquid that kind of makes it seem not realistic on TV, or even the words like sanitary products. Or feminine hygiene makes us seem unhygienic on our period. Yeah, well, we can't call it feminine hygiene anymore, can we? Because men are having periods now. It's just all of these words thank that are laced in this. All bit. right, then. Uh, Laura Corrigan, thank you very much. Well, you had a successful campaign there. Stop taxing periods campaign. I, again, I'm more of a priority about not. I mean, we, we tax a lot of products which are necessities, I say, including car seats. I, 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 
VAT is on an awful lot of stuff that we do consider to be uh, vital. Uh, anyway, let's uh, turn our attention to other aspects in the budget. That's obviously a very small aspect. In fact, uh, tampon tax. I think I worked out uh, when I did the, the maths on an average girl. Again, some people will have uh, heavier periods and use more products any month. The average, the average woman will be spending 75 pence a year uh, on the tax that they're paying, the VAT they're paying on their, their sanitary products. So I'm not sure it's a, that big a win for women, but there we are.